welcome to all of you. It is my privilege and honor to hold this session. And do you know that attending post-lunch session actually help burn calories? <laughs> so, uh, so let's welcome Gulraj Bhatia as the President Healthcare, Imame Limited. Uh, Gulraj manages the PNL, uh, sales and marketing for the OTC, Medico, and D2C businesses for the Zandu Ayurvedic range. Today he squeezed time for us amid quarterly results and investors calls. So thank you for coming here, Gulraj. And Gulraj, today's consumers are more sophisticated, they are more aware, they are attuned to global, global trends, and uh, they are health conscious, uh, they prefer natural products, uh, and they are ready to pay premium for the quality products, but at the same time, they also seek value for money. So such evolved consumers, I think they are, you know, uh, driving the marketing trends and reshaping the landscape. So from you, I would like to know how the healthcare and wellness business uh, market in India evolved over the last couple of years in terms of consumers and product categories. Yeah, so I think it's a very pertinent, interesting question. I think uh, firstly, uh, I'd like to say hello to all of you. I think all of you mostly are from the healthcare uh, industry. And uh, in that context, as you're probably aware, people who've been in the industry for maybe over 10 years, India used to be, if you look at uh, on a scale of global per capita consumption in healthcare, we used to be at a far, far lower level, probably one tenth or one twentieth of what uh, the world markets in the West would be, or even in uh, Asia Pacific. Even in Southeast Asia, our per capita levels of consumption of healthcare products were very low. I'm talking of consumer healthcare products, but from a pharma perspective, from a doctor prescription perspective, our consumption of healthcare products has been fairly good. But from an OTC or a consumer healthcare perspective, people would not really go and buy evolved products. It was a basic problem solution market, so you would have for fever two or three products like, you know, Crocin, like say Calpol, etc. Uh, and then even for headaches, there used to be Saridon, Anacin, etc. So in every category, there were two or three major brands, and then there would be the unorganized sector. But what has happened probably over the last five, six years, especially driven by COVID, and driven by you know, the surge in online uh, digital marketing, et cetera, there's been a sea change. Virtually in every product category, as we are aware, there must be at least 40 to 50 products or brands which have come in offering very, very differentiated solutions. And why has this happened? There are many factors responsible, but I would probably highlight two or three. One is that in almost every consumer product category, I'm not talking of healthcare, I'm talking of uh, consumer products in general, consumer durables, consumer electronics, etc. People are becoming very, very evolved, especially in the top 35 or 40 mini metros and metros. You actually see in every category products with far higher differentiation, many variants being offered. So in a sense, the market is getting evolved at an overall level in India, and the healthcare market is also following suit. It's not that uh, suddenly people's healthcare needs have changed. They have probably remained constant in many categories, but because of the consumer awareness, because the consumer higher discretionary spends, people want to experiment, people want to get the best out of what they are buying. Uh, the second factor has been COVID, as I mentioned briefly. During COVID, we had seen the market growing at 50 to 60 percent for categories such as immunity, such as overall wellness, such as overall uh, uh, anti-infection, you know, uh, anti-viral fevers, etc. Post-COVID, we've seen a high dip in terms of the sales. The market has come back to the previous levels, but because of the COVID factor, people started buying online the traditional brick and mortar companies had to move online. So what happened is that during COVID, there was a probably thousand fold increase in terms of online players offering very, very specialized, very niche offerings, right from organic foods to you know, regular health foods, which you couldn't otherwise get access to. And hence, there's been a sea change in the last probably four or five years in terms of people having access to a lot more online information a lot more healthcare experts who come in online. Earlier, you could name a few, you know, 
experts in healthcare, you would probably not be able to say more than five or six. Today, there are at least a hundred you can, people who are into the healthcare industry who can be named, who have their own followers, who have their own, uh, you know, uh, large consumer uh, followers across online, whether it's Instagram, whether it is YouTube, etc. And the third factor, which I think is very, very important, is that uh, this whole omni-channel play which has come into play, earlier it used to be a very product-centric market. Now it's become, through the omni-channel play, a very services-driven market also. So almost uh, all the new players who come in are offering omni-channel services. You look at Tracto, you look at even Apollo Health, which used to be earlier brick and mortar stores, pharmacies. Today, they are offering a range of services, which is more like a 360-degree approach, whether it is diagnostic services, whether it is home delivery, whether it is you know being able to get both Rx and OTC medicines, and then players like Healthify, me, players like Cultfit, are offering such specialized services that you could not imagine them earlier. You can do yoga online, you can do meditation online, in fact, in certain cities like Delhi, you're actually getting even swimming pool services on a you know, subscription model basis where you get an exclusive swimming pool in a hotel or in a club, etc. So the market has evolved rapidly and we are seeing that a change which has come in both in terms of per capita consumption and the range of products and services which are being offered. Wonderful insights. Even I was not aware of the swimming pool offers. I would like to explore it in Mumbai. Uh, so, Gulraj, can you also like to highlight, you know, certain emerging categories uh, that have gained significance in the last, you know, couple of years? Uh, see, some of the categories which really boomed during COVID uh, were immunity related. I'm sure people who are handling multivitamins or vitamin C or even Chavan Prash would have seen a boom happen. Uh, in fact, interestingly, Chavan Prash was one category which uh, we saw go up by 50%. It was also led by, you know, the government with the Ayush ministry pushing for, and the prime minister pushing for Ayush-based products and Ayurvedic products. Uh, <clears throat> but what is interesting is that some other categories which did well during COVID, for example, digestive disorders was a major issue. People were at home. People were having a f lack of exercise, sedentary lifestyle. So products related to digestive disorders such as acidity, uh, constipation really did well. They grew by 30, 40 percent. And some of these categories have actually sort of continued the momentum. And Digestus is doing still very well. Uh, some of the new categories which have come in the last three, four years, which used to be probably, you know, not known so much earlier. For example, stress. Stress used to be a word which was taboo till about five years back. You know, we had done some researches earlier where People would not like to say openly in front of their colleagues at office, etc., that, you know, I have stress. But today, it's become far more open. People don't, in fact, people are proud to say that, you know, I'm leading a stressful life, etc. And this is one of the most searched categories uh, after hair care and after skin care. So skin care and hair care in the top 30 cities uh, among people up to the age of 35, 40 years basically are the most searched categories. <clears throat> and I'm not talking of just skin care, hair care in terms of, you know, the regular uses. I'm talking of the more specialized benefits, premature hair graying. Uh, in skin care, it's acne, it is eczema. These have become far more predominant, but stress has become the number three, followed by sleep disorders, again linked to stress. Uh, some of the other categories which uh, are doing very well uh, are the new formats. Earlier till about, say, five, six years back, the regular formats would be powders, syrups, and tablets. Today, we have far more interesting formats, as you're aware, uh, the, the lead being taken by gummies, which one would have thought would be seen as a kiddie product. Gummies typically used to be consumed by children, but today there are specialized offerings in gummies which are being consumed by people in the age group of 25 to 35 years, quite uh, substantially. And some of the new age startups are doing very well in that. Then there are formats like effervescent tablets, shorts, uh, and even in the, in the traditional categories such as digestive disorders, these formats are doing very, very well. Apart from that, there is a high degree of sales coming in from the plant-based or natural food products. So there is a huge increase in terms of CAGR sales of the last couple of years at about 25 to 30 percent. 
in the plant-based products. Protein powders, which used to be the whey protein, are now moving rapidly into the, pro the plant-based proteins. So that's another new shift which has happened. Apart from that, uh, some of the interesting categories which probably are doing well, which would continue to do well, would be in the area of specialized single ingredient uh, supplements. So nutraceuticals as a whole has, has, has boomed after COVID. There are probably hundreds of startups which have come up in the nutraceutical space. But what is interesting is the use of single ingredient or maybe a couple of ingredient, high dose ingredients which are being prescribed by more the healthcare professionals and even the online healthcare providers. They could be magnesium, they could be ashwagandha, they could be X, Y, Z. So there is a high incidence of uh, personalized medications being uh, you know, used by consumers in this domain. Very interesting points you actually shared. And uh, Gulraja, we would also like to know, do you think that cultural influences and diversity also influences consumers' choice in the healthcare? See, typically India, uh, as you know, has a very high rural consumer base, say about 70% or so. Uh, typically, especially in parts of the north, east and west, people have been used to taking home remedies. So if there's any problem at home, you first try a home remedy. It could be a kada if you're suffering from throat disorders, or it could be turmeric, or it could be ajwain, if, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that gradually is now moving into more branded or more differentiated offerings in, say, uh, OTC products. So, for, for example, pehle log haldi kha lete the. now people want haldi drops or turmeric drops as they are called. And even some of the traditional formats in Giloi, which used to be very, you know, sort of uh, niche, has now become more mainstream. So, you have health juices, you have Giloi tablets, you are now getting Giloi supplements in other formats also, like tablets, effervescent, etc. So one shift which you're seeing is move from the home remedies, which used to take time to make, you know, your mother would make them or your grandmother would make them. But with increasing nuclearization of families where both the husband and wife are working, people actually are moving into wanting to have ready to use formats. The other major trend which one sees at a cultural level is that the traditional format, if you used to see advertising for maybe brands like Move or some of the, you know, health drinks such as Bone Vita Boost, where the mother or the woman would be seen as the healthcare provider for the family. She would be buying products or being actually using products for the children or for the elders or for the husband. But increasingly today, we are finding that the woman is becoming uh, far more conscious about her own sense of well-being, about her own sense of, you know, health. So we had done a lot of research earlier where about half the women today go and ask doctors for saying, look here, I'm feeling weak, I'm feeling fatigued, can I get a health supplement or a nutraceutical for myself or a multivitamin supplement for myself? And that shift in the last couple of years has gone into far more categories. With, as I mentioned, lifestyle disorders have become far more prevalent. So you have, for women, increasing incidence of menstrual issues, PCOS, PCOD. These were unheard of till a few years back. So what's happened is that because of the increasing sedentary lifestyle or the increasing dual role which a woman has to do of both work and managing the home, these disorders have come in coupled with the fact that they are still not taking good care of themselves in terms of, you know, the kind of food they are eating, et cetera, et cetera. So, so the women's healthcare market is probably going to explode in the next few years. We've seen signs of it through specialized offerings being offered by online players and will slowly moving in, move into the brick and mortar segment also. Similarly, in the men's segment, uh, digestive disorders have become far more prevalent. People are being far more open to buying products which are, which used to be closet earlier, you know, shilajit, which used to be seen as sexual wellness. But today, shilajit has become far more mainstream. It's being consumer people who believe they need more energy, people who are into gymming, people who want instant energy. I'm talking of the, the shift which is happening from the traditional formats which are becoming far more mainstream now. That's I think women becoming more aware about their health, that Absolutely. is a really positive change. Absolutely. And I think access to uh, healthcare services and, you know, products are also, you know, making this change, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All this is, I think, being led by the online revolution which has come in. You would not have seen it if the online segment was not present. Because today, you know, 
there are people who have no experience in healthcare setting up startups <laughs> and and doing reasonably well though it's becoming increasingly challenging with the plethora of people who come in so then you need to have the 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 staying power and the r and d and the scientific bandwidth to be able to offer products which are specialized and which actually are efficacious gulraj i would quickly like to know from you how has ayurveda market evolved in india uh it used to be probably very very basic in terms of till about say 6 or 7 years back it used to be chavan prash and a couple of other ingredients ingredient based uh, supplements but in the last 3 4 years as we all know with the push which has come from the government and which has come from covid it's become far more mainstream and i'm not talking of products which are consumer uh, ayurvedic products which have ingredients such as amla which are used in hair oils or which are used in say face creams i'm talking of core healthcare products where today ayurveda is playing a far more central role the cagr growths which are happening for ayurveda or are about 4 or 5% higher than regular otc and at imami we've seen that happen and we've been leading the change along with a few other ayurvedic companies it's really interesting and because the market is changing so fast and ayurveda is getting more popular in india so we would like to know what initiatives you have taken you know to cater to today's evolved and also price conscious consumers so it'll be interesting to note that till about say in the in the otc domain till about maybe 3 years back or 4 years back we had about 10 to 15 products in the otc domain in 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 our jandu division today we have over 100 products so the last 3 4 years we launched over 100 products uh in the otc domain and uh, this has been obviously led by both the increased interest which we are seeing in in ayurveda but at the same time uh, i think a lot of it has to do with uh, the increased focus we put in from an r&d from a product development perspective on getting into virtually every product category which say otc caters to and uh, uh, the benefits really uh, while people can debate about uh, you know there are always views pro and counter some people might say i have that takes time etc but my personal experience suggests that that's not the case with the right formulation with the right uh, ingredient usage uh, in many categories ayurveda probably delivers far better than the regular otc remedies because most of them tend to have side effects which is why people in india have been a bit shy of consuming allopathic medicines but in the case of ayurveda if a company makes formulations as per the required dosages with the required quality of ingredients i think uh, the benefits are there to see and not only in india even some of the you know ingredients like ashwagandha for example or even curcumin and turmeric in markets like us have crossed 1 billion dollars in terms of annual sales because there have been studies there have been researches which actually prove the benefits so we have actually seen the benefits come out of ayurvedic products across the board it's yes, very really interesting and many of the otc companies are getting into ayurvedic products in a big way yeah so acceptance of yoga has gone up and as you mentioned ki <clears throat> from 3 otc products to 100 products that is phenomenal i guess uh we would like to know did you face any challenges in this you know transformational journey and how did you address them actually one of the things we did i think we were probably one of the first companies to to actually get into the d2c space in a very serious manner about 4 years back so while we all talk about you know the online play but it's been mostly led by the e-com platforms such as you know uh, amazon such as flipkart or the e pharmacies which have come in strongly in the last 4 5 years such as 1mg such as uh, netmeds pharmacy etc but uh, almost all the large players also including say you know the the top fmcg companies were sh- fighting shy of getting into their own t2c portals while they had set up d2c portals but they were more like you know having a token presence they were relying more or they rely more on the e-commerce marketplaces because that's for far more you know cost effective but i think we our senior men took a very conscious call looking at what would happen in the next 10 to 20 years where we believe that the d2c space would become far larger and we invested a lot into the tech into the, the into the r&d into the people into the talent management and we set up a whole you know division 
on the D2C platform, jandukya.com. And we've launched around 70 to 80 products in the last four years. And we are seeing a rapid ramp up happen both through the D2C platform, which allows you to innovate, which allows you to look at the low MOQ volumes which are required. So it's not, you know, like the regular brick and mortar business where you, you know, you need a sufficient uh, number of retail outlets or sufficient media spend. Here you can do a lot more quick turnaround pilot tests and be able to innovate a lot more. So it's a whole ecosystem which we set up, which is where we are actually gradually moving into, both through the regular launches which you're doing, and in the offline space also, we've done a lot of work on looking at offerings which are differentiated, which basically do not become a Me Too offering, because in today's marketplace, a Me Too offering will never succeed. It has to be led by both a product-specific and ingredient-specific benefit which you can quantify, and then be able to communicate to consumers. So Can there you know, have been many challenges, of course. It's not been easy. It's not been, you know, uh, it's, it's today to, to attract the right talent, to retain talent. It's a whole ecosystem it has to be managed. Even from a product development perspective, the timelines have to be crashed. How do you do, you know, stability testing, which takes accelerated testing, which takes six to nine months. How do you crash it? How do you make sure that you're building a pipeline, which basically you can roll out to the next three, four years. So it's been a very good learning journey for us. How much share of sales your D2C channel is driving? This is my last question. Uh, it's a bit confidential, but what I can say is that uh, it's probably going to become a significant part of the business going forward. Really very interesting. Now a rapid fire round, just which Imami product or services is your most favorite one? While there are a number of them, uh, I would probably uh, look at uh, a Chavan Pras Jaggery format which we launched. Like I was mentioning earlier, it's important to do product differentiation in whatever you offer. So, you know, the Chavan Prash market has been dominated by one or two brands, and we were a small player. We said if we, if we off, and Chavan Prash is a standard formulation. You can't do much to change it because there's a laid down pharmacopoeal index on it. But we came in with a, with a product which, you know, probably most consumers do not know, but Chavan Prash in its regular format contains over 50% sugar refined sugar. So we said refined sugar is not good for consumers, so we went in for a zero sugar, but a jaggery, gourd-based Chavan Prash, and we were the first to launch it in India and globally. And uh, that product has far more benefits than the regular Chavan Prash because there are 15 to 20 benefits which a good offers versus regular sugar. You know, so, so we are able to offer that, and it's a great tasting product. It's, it's also not easy to make it because the stability and other factors have to be considered. So that's my favorite. One big product. change which you, you would like to see in the market, just, just quickly. I think from a healthcare perspective, while the market is seeing rapid changes, I think what would be important to keep in mind is that we are moving more and more towards personalized, you know, or individualized healthcare delivery. So I think that's a major change I would like to see as to, you know, with the plethora of products, how can you, in today's day and age, with omni-channel, with AI coming in, how can you offer customized healthcare needs suited to individual needs? And I think that, that time is not far away. Maybe in the next five, ten years, you'll actually see people's individual needs being catered to buy both AI and buy both, you know, personalized healthcare uh, services, actually. What is your own fitness mantra? Actually, I don't have a great mantra, but what I try to do is to be physically, mentally, and spiritually fit. I think we all are probably conscious about the physical and mental fitness, but I think the spiritual aspect probably becomes far more important also in today's day and age. Thank you so much, Gulraj, for sharing your time and wisdom with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Really nice speaking to you. Thanks so much.